Good morning. Today I'll be reading Hebrews 10, 22 to 25. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as in the matter, manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. They all said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. We um, have been working in this, since the beginning of the year, in this uh, sermon series of less to more. And, and um, what the series is about is, is that there are times that we feel less than. We feel less adequate. We feel less powerful. We feel less courageous. We feel less hopeful. There's all these things that we feel less. And yet, what we learned in the first week was, is that when we add Jesus to the mixture, when he becomes part of our equation, that we can be more. That we don't have to live in our less, that we can live in his abundance, in his more. And we are, we are thankful that we can do that. So last week we talked about that when we are feeling less, that we can feel more godly. And, and this week... Um, the series uh, continues that when we feel less or that we have less faith, Jesus can give us more faith. You know, I, I think if you would ask me perhaps the one crisis in Christianity that most people struggle with sometime in their lives, it would be having less faith. Having um, the ability to say no matter what God's got this and, and I and I think it's okay I think God understands that but in everything that happens in our lives typically no matter how good a Christian you are there's a point that you go I just don't see how this is going to work out I can't imagine any solution that makes this any better and so there are times when we need to be added to. When we need really perhaps even multiplication of faith that helps us understand how much Jesus can be part of our lives and change what is going on. You know, I, I, I think through, you know, like what Robin's family is going through right now. You know, without Jesus, funerals are horrid. They are so painful. Without the hope of Jesus Christ, they become something that, that can shock you into a, into a time where you can't even deal with it. But with Jesus, with the, with the faith of Jesus Christ and the ability to rely upon Him and to know that, that He has promised us that He won't leave us, even in those circumstances where we're not perfect, that He still won't leave us. For me, that brings hope. See, faith in of itself begets hope. And I would tell you, the human condition without Jesus is hopelessness. And how you fight hopelessness is through faith. Um, Jeanette and I, when we were traveling up here for the very first time, we had come across this song that's a secular song that sounds like a Christian song. And, um, you know, at first when we heard it, it didn't seem to mean that much to us. But over time, it has grown into be something that has a deeper me meaning for us in this moment in our lives. And I'd like to read you a couple of the lyrics 
And, and today, it's sort of apropos for what was going on yesterday for sure. It begins with, I know the winds so cold. I've seen the darkest days. But now the winds I feel are only winds of change. I've been through the fire and I've been through the rain, but I'll be fine because I got faith of the heart. I'm going where my heart will take me. I've got faith to believe. I can do anything. I've got strength of the soul and no one's going to bend or break me. I can reach any star because I've got faith. Faith is such a powerful gift of God. Faith allows us to defeat perhaps one of the greatest issues in our life, which is fear. You know, fear of failure, fear of the unknown, fear that we're not good enough, fear that we're unwanted, fear of tomorrow. Fear of yesterday. Faith defeats fear. Now, when we talk about faith, one of those people that are often quoted when we talk about faith is Corey Tenboom. And I don't know if you know her story, but suffice it to say, she went through so much more than many of us will ever even think about experiencing. And she says this, never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. What a powerful statement. Never be afraid, never fear to trust an unknown future to a known God. You see, part of faith is, is that do we have a God that we can know? See, the gift that God has given us through Jesus Christ is that we can know him. We can know his attributes. We can know his nature. We can know his love. Man was built to know God. Just as a man and a woman in a marriage is built to know each other. God sent His Son so that we could know Him. So that we could understand Him. And you see, He knew that in our faith that it would become something different if we knew who we had faith in. And that in those moments when the future is uncertain, that we can rely upon Him. I will say this, and, and I don't think I'm speaking of any person in this room when I say this. But there are people in your lives that will be unreliable to you. Humans, in general, when push comes to shove, struggle with being reliable, especially reliable like God is reliable. So you can trust in God. God God will tell you something. God will write something. God will um, act out upon something. And you can trust that's what he means. When he says, I love you, or that I, I will never leave you or nor forsake you, you can take that to the bank. There are people that's going to tell you that they love you all the time. And they don't mean it. They're going to tell, there's going to be people that say, I got your back. And yet when push comes to shove, you look back and they ain't back. They ain't there. But God is. You see, part of the value of faith is knowing that we have a God who is there. When we pray at pray time, when we're at prayer time and we're anointing people and we say, we trust you and we rely upon you and that we expect you to do things, it's because we know he is there. See, this faith that we talk about, sometimes we're very flippant with it. It's like, yeah, I have faith. 
But this faith that is a gift from God is more than that. He's allowing us to see him in a way that you truly can rely upon that. It's, the only thing I think we can have any understanding of that in a non-godly way is perhaps gravity. You're pretty assured that when you take your next step, gravity is going to put you on your foot back on the ground, right? When you walk, if I jump off this platform, it's going to be a big boom when I get down there because we know gravity is going to work. We don't, we don't even consciously say, okay, gravity, pull me down. You know, I, I keep me stuck to the earth. No, we know in our hearts, we know that gravity is there. And, and God is the same way, is that, you know, sometimes we must act even at that very intrinsic level, at that very basic level, it says, I, I know everything that's going bad right now. I know everything that, that is in my life and it's horrid and I can't get around this and I don't understand it. But at the very basics of everything, He is there. He is there. That is faith. That is that gift of faith that if we act upon, that we can live a life that is different than those without faith. What I'm so thankful for is that we can have faith. And the other thing about faith, the other attribute of faith, is that it drowns out the lies of the devil. He's a liar. He's going to tell you all the time that you deserve to be shamed, that you are guilty, that you should fear, that you're not good enough. He's going to lie to you about that. There's no way you can get through this because you're too weak. But Paul says, I can do all things through Christ. Even that. I wish you had wrote it that way. I can do all things through Christ. Even that. Whatever that is for you right now, even that, he can, you can do all things. Because Christ will strengthen you. That is the essence of faith. I got the privilege this week to doing some manual labor. And uh, I was joking with a couple of the guys here afterwards. And um, I, I went up to my wife afterwards. And my daughter does this all the time. She goes, be proud, Dad. She'll, she'll do something like, she'll brush her teeth. And then she'll come to me. Be proud, Dad, I brushed my teeth. And I like, okay. So I, I got to do some work around here, not, not in my comfort zone, but I, I did it and, it, and I did well on it. And, and afterwards, um, I was like, you know, proud about it a little bit. And I, I told Jeanette, you know, I'm, I'm proud that I got this done. And she said, I don't know why you don't have faith that you can do this, because you always have the ability to do whatever God wants you to do. And, and I think sometimes we feel that way just in life in general, right? I think sometimes we feel like, well, I can't do that. I, I'm not able to do that. There's no way that I could ever be a disciple to somebody. There's no way that I could speak about Jesus to anybody. But if we have faith, doesn't that mean that we can step on the liar? push him back, set him down, and say, look, you're a liar. God said that he would be with me. And I believe in him that he will work a great work in me. The great part about having Jesus giving us this gift of faith is the fact that we can do anything through him. Anything. Anything. Name something you can't do through him, and I will tell you that it is only possible through God. It takes faith. But the nice thing about faith is, it's not like you have to be this great faith producer. Instead, it is more like the um, 
father of the sixth son in Mark chapter 9. Jesus says, if you will believe, I will heal your son. And the father says, I believe. Help me with my unbelief. I believe. Help me with my unbelief. How many of us, if we were going to raise our hands right now, would say the same thing in almost all our tough circumstances? God, I believe in you, but help me with my unbelief. Help me with my unbelief. Help me understand. And that's why when I speak like in our Bible studies and when I'm teaching, you will hear me say that faith is a gift. The, the believing part, what we would call faith in Jesus is our part and it is a very small part of the equation but the faith that we have that anything is possible is when Christ helps us with our unbelief and I'm not here to suggest and nor would you ever hear this come out of my mouth that if you have doubts that you're not a Christian but I will tell you, if you have doubts and you do not take them to Jesus, they will weigh you down. Your fear comes from your doubts that are not surrounded by Christ's love. See, faith says, I can give this to you, Lord, because you have promised these things that I am assured of. More faith is more reliance. In fact, if you're looking to see how much faith I have, see how much I rely on Him. If I don't rely on Him a lot, then perhaps I don't believe in the faith that I have. You know, we make it out all you got to do is have faith. Yet all of us, at one time or another, in one circumstance or another, faith, a humanly faith, is not enough. A divine faith is all you need. We are finite. Our faith in of itself is finite. When you add God into the equation, it becomes infinite. You can have faith in anything that you do. And moreover than anything else, you can have faith in yourself. I, I, I find at times, and I know this is counter to what many would say, that it is easier for me to have faith in others than it is to have faith in myself. And I know people will say, well, that doesn't make sense to me. But I, I, can, I can say, well, I, I think they'll do what they say they're going to do. I believe them. But down deep in my own soul, sometimes I doubt that I can do what I say I can do. And it comes back to Romans chapter 7 when Paul says, what I want to do, I don't do. And what I don't do, I do. What I don't want to do, I do. You know, human faith without Christ is weak. It is finite. But with Christ, we can be more than ourselves because we can believe in things, believe in possibilities that are beyond our own imagination. When, when Jeanette and I were traveling up here, we wasn't sure what we was getting into. But we believed. We believed in faith that we were supposed to come. I haven't even read the verse for today because faith to me is such an important understanding that we need to make sure that we have faith in the right place. I mean, even if we look at like definitions of what faith is. You know, even if we understand what faith is, sometimes we still do not understand faith. Because we try to give it a connotation that is different than what God intended it to be. 
But I will say this, that when we talk about faith, faith is this. Without faith, life is like rowing a boat across Lake Michigan with a hole in it. Especially when Lake Michigan is in storms, the last thing that you probably really would like to be in is a boat with a hole in it. What's going to happen? You're going to float for a little bit, but you're going to start to take water in. Cold, frigid water. Water that, especially right now, water that, that would be bone-chilling cold water. And soon, if you don't do anything about the hole, the boat's going to sink. Our lives are very similar to that. Sometimes we're rowing through life, through the storms of life, and it's got a hole in it. And, and that hole is causing life to seep up through everything we do. And at times it feels like we are sinking deeper and deeper into despair because we don't have the ability to plug the hole. But then Jesus offers, let me fill that hole for you. Let me fill that, that, that uh, feeling of what it means to, to feel like you're being sunk in life. Pat, let me patch up that hole. Let me protect you. Let me give you the faith that allows you to, to weather any storm, to climb any mountain, to go through any tribulation or trial. Let me give you that type of faith. And all at once, that hole no longer is affecting you. See, often when we are dealing with um, things of Christ, we forget that He is what guides us through all this. We say we're Christians. We say that we are followers of Christ. Yet when push came, comes to shove, are we always relying upon Him? Are we always relying on His more, His excess? Faith, true faith, says, I will rely upon you. You will fill the holes in my life. Let's read our scripture for today. It's Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. One verse, Paul writes it to the Galatians, and, I, and he's explaining to them what it means to have Christ in your life, the crucified Christ. Galatians 2, chapter 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And I would say, if you're going to say, well, what is the, the core question of this sermon? I think the question that, I, that I'm sort of asking you to ask yourself in your heart, do you, can you, live by faith do you and can you live by faith paul says when i live by faith by the son of god everything's better everything's stronger everything that i do if i live by faith now faith the the core word uh, the Greek word for faith, the core of that means to be persuaded. It means to trust. And so when we're talking about faith, the question is, are you persuaded that he is able? No matter what it is, are you persuaded that he is able? You know, so when we're talking about faith, it is about confidence. You know, I, I, I think about that often is, you know, how much confidence do we really have in God? Do you? Can you? 
have confidence in him. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that. And, and, and you may be saying, well, Scott, what if I don't? What, what if about in my life that there are things that I don't feel that confident about? You know, what if I don't think that I, I can live by faith sometimes, but not all the time? I mean, I mean, look, I say this in Bible study all the time. There is theory, right? Theory that says you should live by faith. And I, I think as a, as a pastor, I would love to just stop there. I would love to just say, okay, live by faith, be gone, and have a great day. But the reality of life is that living by faith is not something all of us do that well. That our lives make it very difficult for us to do. And so living by faith, when it seems humanly possible, is what we're talking about today. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, Paul writes about this gift. For by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. You see, faith is a gift. I'm not asking you to generate faith. You, you don't have the ability in every circumstance. I mean, look, look let's, let's be real. Let's talk in reality for a second. You get diagnosed with cancer. Your first thing, you want it to be, I live by faith, and that's it. But there's very few people in that moment doesn't feel like they got their, their stomach punched. They don't feel sucker punched a little bit. Oh, once I got cancer. Oh, it's stage three or stage four. I, I don't know how I'm going to go farther. Or, or for worse for many of us, oh no, my spouse has cancer. Can we live by faith in those moments? Without Christ, I would say no. I would say we need His loving compassion for those moments. You know, I find... Those are the moments when Christianity shines the most. Those are the moments when we recognize how much Jesus really means to us. Is when our faith can become this powerful motivator to walk through the shadows of the valley of death. That when we are in those moments, can we accept the gift that Jesus is offering us? Can we have that faith? Can we feel that guarantee? You know, this Bible was perhaps the first document of warranty. You say, well, pastor, what do you mean? Um, you know, like if you buy um, a washing machine, you're going to get this document that says, if this washing machine uh, doesn't work properly, we will replace it within X number of years. You know, typically it's one year now. It used to be longer than that. And you can get extended warranties and you can get all this. But the warranty basically is this guarantee that it's going to work. And there's all this little fine print, typically, that if you read it, um, you're probably not the normal human being. You know, if you don't do this, and you do this, and you don't do this, and you don't do this, and blah, 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 we'll still cover it. You know, you can't put your dog in the washing machine or the dryer or whatever. You know, there's all these little fine prints. But God gave us this warranty, this guarantee and instead of it being in fine print, it's bold statements of how much he loves us and how much he wants to be there for us. And, and even when we are sinners, he died for us. In these guarantees that he gives us, we can learn to rely upon him. 
Our faith grows when we read this warranty of his. I love you so much, I will send my son for you. And so when you don't feel the faith, if it doesn't seem like it's big enough, go back to the warranty and reread the warranty. There's guarantees in here. If you're saying, I don't know what to read, come to me, text me, call me. Send smoke signals up. And I will give you passages that will show how he is guaranteed to be there for us. Guaranteed that he loves you no matter what. Is there anybody in this world that God does not love? This Bible says no. He may indict actions, but he still loves them. He still loves them. There's a guarantee in here that he loves you. For God so loved the world. It didn't say, for God loved those that loved him. Or for God love those that, that do all the right things. Thank goodness for this room that we don't have to always do everything right for God to still love us. Thank, thankful that we can be here right now and say, okay, I don't do everything right, God. I'm not perfect, but thank you for still loving me. That is faith. That he can still love you with the warts, with the scars, with the imperfection. I, I've said this to many. My mother calls herself the imperfect perfectionist. And I love, I, I, at first I didn't get it. The more that I hear it, the more I love saying it. As Christians, there are times that we are imperfect. But through Christ, we are perfect. And we become these imperfect perfectionists that every day that we reach for His faith, every day that we trust in Him, every day we take His assurances and we, and we go forward with them that we can walk a righteous path. That anything is possible. I close with this thought. If you want God to work in your life, you need faith. If you want God to work in this church, we must be about faith. If you want this community to feel the love of God, we must be about faith. Faith is what enables great things to happen. In us, through us, great things happen. Look, I know many of you are great faith warriors and I know many of you accept the assurances of God may you feel blessed today because that gift of faith allows you to walk with him but know this that for some of us that faith is a daily struggle that faith is something that we always need to improve on. And I'm asking for those that have this great faith, that you surround us, that you strengthen us, that you encourage us, that, that we together are able then to become a church of greater faith, that we together become the more that Jesus wants us to be, that we together for once in our lives feel like faith is more important than anything else. What a joy it is to be able to look at the mountain and say, you will not conquer me because I am an overcomer because of God's faith, that gift that he has given me. 
Looking in the valley, it is so wonderful to look down into the dark valley and know I can go through that valley because Jesus is with me. When you feel less, give it to Jesus. And He will be your more. Will you stand please? Announcements for today, I don't, I don't know if everybody has heard, but Robin's father, um, Bob Kindley, passed away, um, I believe it was Friday, was it, was it Friday? Um, his um, visitation is 3 to 7 at Hillside on Thursday, and then the funeral is Friday morning at 10 a.m., and then we'll have a dinner here afterwards. Uh, Robin is the, our, typically our funeral coordinator, I think June is going to take that responsibility for, is that right, June? And Connie, June and Connie. We're in good hands then. So um, if, if um, you can help them with the uh, funeral dinner, just um, let them know and um, we'll go from there. Um, so uh, Thursday, 3 to 7, Hillside, and then Friday morning at 10 a.m. is the funeral if you would like to support the family and their loss. Um, other announcements, we have discipleship on Tuesday at 7. We have Bible study tonight, youth tonight. Keith isn't here today because his whole family is sick. I guess the flu is all over their house, and, uh, but he will be here tonight. Um, so Bible study and youth tonight at 5. Discipleship at the church, um, 7 p.m. on Tuesday. And then prayer meeting is Wednesday at 7 p.m. And then ladies' Bible study is 10 a.m. on Thursday. And I know they're working through this new um, program uh, in the book of Job. So if you've ever read the book of Job or if you've ever been interested in the book of Job, um, sounds like this is going to be a really interesting Bible study. And it's one of, one of the few things that maybe nobody knows about the book of Job is it's the oldest written book in the Bible. Even though it's not the first book in the Bible, it is most scholars believe it's the oldest written book. And so the wisdom that you find in that book is from the very beginnings of the understanding of God himself. And so it's a, going to be a great Bible study. And they started last week, but there's plenty of time to join in if you'd like to join in. Did you say, and it's hard, Sister Taylor? <laughs> um, I think that's all the announcements we have um, if the ushers